In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The word of the Lord is found recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, the third chapter, beginning at the eleventh verse. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health, in the presence of you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is found recorded in the Gospel of St. John, the third chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he remained there with them and was baptizing. John also was baptizing at Anon near Salim because water was plentiful there, and people were coming and being baptized, for John had not yet been put in prison. Now a discussion arose between some of John's disciples and a Jew over purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you bore witness, look, he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, A person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore this joy of mine is now complete. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth, and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A devotion from the writings of Martin Luther based on the text Isaiah 55 verse 3, which reads, I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. The prophet has reference to the promise made to David in the seventh chapter of Second Samuel. In the preceding verses of the chapter, Isaiah most tenderly entreats and invites the whole world to receive the promises of salvation. For thereby shall the poor, the wretched, and the afflicted obtain the great treasures of joy and salvation. Immediately following the verse quoted, he speaks of the Messiah, the promised seed of David, as given to the Levites for a witness, a preacher sent by God, and for a leader and commander to the people. The thought is of a king and ruler differing from Moses and his priests and exponents of the law. 
a ruler differing from every other lord and king, from David and all worldly rulers, whatever, subjecting everything to himself. Not that this leader should set up a new temporal government or extend Jewish authority among the Gentiles, but that Jews and Gentiles should receive him and believe in him and obtain the fulfillment of that promise he here terms a covenant of the sure mercies of David. This covenant God enters into and keeps a divine, sure covenant. Through Christ, through Christ shall be given whatever blessings God's mercy shall bestow, with remission of sins, redemption from death, and life eternal. Now if the Christ of this covenant is true man and as the promise to David is, of David's flesh and blood. And if he is to bring eternal mercy, he must likewise be God, such gift being in the province and power of God alone. This being true, he cannot remain in death, although he suffer death by reason of his human nature. He must of his own power rise from the dead. Only so can he raise others and give them everlasting life. Only so can he truly be called eternal king of grace, righteousness, and life, according to the sure promise of God. Whenever the scriptures speak of Christ's eternal kingdom and of everlasting grace, they point out this article of the resurrection of Christ. God has promised to give us Christ, him, who was to sit at his right hand, that is, to have the omnipotent divine power possible only to an eternal Lord and King, and at the same time, to have his kingdom on earth. We confess together our common and saving faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.